Hello and welcome to Creativity Montessori and the Meaning of of Life. I'm your host, Robin Norgren, and you can find me over on uh, Instagram and find all of my uh, areas on the uh, web at at UBU for Life. Today, I'd like to start uh, this podcast with a conversation about breath. How to breathe. The breath is often the most neglected piece of the puzzle when it comes to honoring our commitment to stay connected with our inner sanctuary. Checking in with the breath is the process of noticing whether our regular breathing patterns are shallow or deep. The idea of taking a deep breath is a physical manifestation of an inner decision to slow down. So let's check in with our breath. Take the breath into the diaphragm with a count of two and gently hold it for a second or two. Now take an exhale of your breath to the count of four and repeat. As you get more comfortable with this exercise, add a number or two to the count. So in for three, out for six, in for four, out for eight. Your body should experience a mini cleansing with just a few renderings of this practice. You can begin your time before God with this practice, allowing it to be an intentional preamble to the time of resting and reflecting. Implement reading breathing while reading something like the Psalms or perhaps your favorite poetry. This exercise requires trust. Trusting yourself to sit. Trusting yourself to allow the words to wash over you. Trusting yourself to hear the words. Trusting your heart that as you breathe the words in, you can imprint change onto your life. This is a segment from a book that I wrote about 10 years ago now called Your Creative Peace, Finding and Deepening Your Creative Voice While Connecting with God. I wrote this book uh, as a way to find my own creative voice. And what I did was basically document how I journeyed through about a year's worth of time of really trying to figure out the idea of like how to find my creative voice and what amuse means and just all of the different exercises that I have heard about, had heard about over the years, but didn't really understand how to put them all together. And so I documented them and put them into what at one point was a, um, an online class. And now it's a book that you could find at my website. Um, but you can also just listen along with me and write the, um, the questions down or just meditate on them as you're driving to work or working out or however you find uh, yourself uh, being able to sit and, um, reflect on what the words are that you're hearing. Now, as you look and think about breathing and those breathing exercises, the next time you try it, and it, when you're in a safe place, obviously, I'd like you to write down three words that describe how this exercise felt for you. Were there any emotions that came up before you started the exercise? Or during? Or after? Think about taking some time, um, either reading some poetry or reading the Psalms, which is a, a collection of poems in the Bible. You find it almost in the very middle of the Bible. If you just open it up to the middle, you'll find it. There's about 150 Psalms there. Even if you don't go in a chronological order, just pick one and maybe try this exercise of breathing with that, with, uh, that Psalm that you choose and see how you feel and what kind of reflections come, come about as a result of it. So um, this ad is sponsored by Anchor. If you haven't heard about Anchor, it's the easiest way to make a podcast. Let me explain. It's free. 
There's creation tools that allow you to record and edit your podcast right from your phone or computer. Anchor will distribute your podcast for you so it can be heard on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and many more. You can make money from your podcast with no minimum listenership. It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Download the free Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Let me share an interview that I did a few years back with an artist named Jodine Shaw. You may have heard about her. You can find her at her website. She does a lot of mixed media art, and it's mostly inspired by her relationship with God. Her preferred medium of creativity is photography, mixed media, writing, journaling, speaking with girls and women, and then weaving that into um, her art. She lived on a family cattle ranch when I talked to her in western South Dakota with her husband Jim and her three children, Tom, Sydney, and Em. Her husband's great-grandfather came from Ireland and homesteaded here over a hundred years ago. It, at the time, it was still a rural area. They lived about 60 miles from the nearest bank, grocery store, doctor, and 90 miles from a Starbucks or a Walmart. She got the habit of bird watching with her grandma, Marge, as a young girl. And she says she continues to do something like this on a daily basis. She enjoys reading and watching movies with her family as well as history and museums. Her creative journey as an adult was relatively new. She had only begun sharing her writing, photography, and art within the last year of when I spoke with her. And she works from home, and her studio at the time was her kitchen table and a counter. You can find her work at jodeneshaw.com, J-O-D-E-N-E-S-H-A-W. As early as she could remember, she said, she had crayons, paints, paper, scissors, markers, all types of art supplies. She said, I believe that is where I discovered that I could indeed create, and I enjoyed it. I believe so much in having those simple tools available to children as early as possible so they can begin to express themselves and communicate. At home or at her grandparents' house, she remembered always creating. She says, I was fascinated by maps and flags of other countries, patterns, also rainbows in color. She says, my creative habits moved into my adult life through scrapbooking, documenting milestones, celebrations, vacations, moments of beauty. These were important for me to remember. The photography and working with paper and colors was her favorite creative outlet, and she viewed it as her time. She says, I developed a habit of Sunday afternoon scrapping while my husband watched NASCAR and my kids would take naps when they were little. In 2006, we were expecting our third child, she says. She said, I struggled with depression off and on for several years. I struggled spiritually, emotionally, financially. The roots of my struggle ran deep back into my early teen years of searching for security, identity, and validity. For those teen years, I seemed able to lean heavily on academic and social success for those three foundation layers of security, identity, and and validity. But as an adult, I rolled that over into seeking that foundation through a career that I thought was the only way to get what I thought. Was looking, I was looking for to find happiness, joy, success, security, identity. My struggle seemed to be very complex. To state it quickly would be to oversimplify it. But here's my attempt. Seeking security, identity, and validity as a person through a career and the image it would be, always on a mission to prove myself to others and especially to me, began to erode all that I was seeking from the inside out. My foundation that I tried to build on my own, putting up a false front and a smile and a mask, crumbled on a day in January 2007. I was broken, raw, exposed before my husband, and I knew I had to live a new way. 
I did not know exactly how, but I knew it would be different. As the mask of what I now know was pride began to crumble, I began to discover more and more of my true self. And so began a wrestling period with God to find the courage to be who he really made me to be and to let go of painting a perfect picture image of myself and my life for others to applaud and admire. She says, I felt like I had lived my life as a resume, always trying to prove that I had value and worth, and I was exhausted from it, tired of living that way, ready to walk in truth and be who I really was, be real and find joy in my everyday life. The Transition God has been at the very heart of my creative process and lifestyle. The change began on that day back in 2007 with my crumbling pride, which had been like a suffocating skin on the the outside of me. At last, I was beginning to break free of it. My Bible study group began a DVD and workbook series, How to Hear God's Voice by Patty and Mark Verkler. I was hesitant to start it, wondering if trying to hear God's voice was okay or if it would just feel like fortune-telling. My hesitation soon melted as I began to hear the Lord care for my heart and lead me into his truth as never before. I was truly able to hear him heal me with words that poured out into journal after journal after journal. My wonderful counselor, the Holy Spirit, poured truth into the places that I had believed lies about where I would find my security, identity, and validity and joy. I found a firm foundation in a real, vibrant, alive relationship with God. As I read the Bible, the words seemed to come off the page and right into my life. I understood and saw my new, with new eyes as I read. Music spoke to my heart constantly. There was a newness to my life. I was beginning to understand how misled I was and how the Lord was the source of what I was seeking, security, identity, and validity. And in Him, I am all that I ever need to be or can be, and am more than I ever can be on my own. My creative, my creativity began in this season through writing. My shelves are lined with journals in which these words seem to flow constantly. I remember having a journal with me even in the bathroom because the thoughts would come while I was in the shower and I'd grab a pen and start writing again, wrapped in a towel before I was even dry. In addition to writing, I started carrying my camera and found the super macro setting. Our third child, Aaron, was born in March 2007, and it seemed like I was new right along with her. As I watched her see things for the first time, I entered in with her entered in the wonder and fascination of my everyday life, the trees, the wind, the snow, the flowers, water. As Aaron looked at the world, I looked through my super macro setting of my camera, finding what I was moved to worship, that that I was moved to worship the creator of such beauty. In the simplicity, I found richness, life, and worship. Our third child, Aaron, was born in March 2007, and it seemed that I was new right along with her. A friend of mine shared part of her journey at a Mother's Day tea. She had studied the book of Ecclesiastes and shared a a phrase that summed up chapter 8, Don't let the foreigners steal your joy. It comes from verse 1 or 2, which says, I have seen another evil under the sun. It waits heavenly on men. God gives a man wealth, possessions, and honor, so that he lacks nothing his heart desires. But God does not enable him to enjoy them, and a stranger enjoys them instead. This was where I had been. I had everything that my heart desired, but was not able to enjoy them. Why? Because I looked at all I didn't have. Because I had looked to creating an image and a career for my foundation instead of the Lord. Because I had made an idol, another God that I was worshiping, seeking, sacrificing my life for, out of my own image career, success, self. And God would not let me find joy in having these things be be my God. But it was like when he became my all in all, I was able to see and enjoy all that was right there, right here, right now, simple, good, 
richness, fullness of life, and abundance. I heard a song by Kevin Chesney on the radio, and I was driving a pickup out in the pasture all by myself, helping my husband move some cattle. It was, don't blink. And I heard him saying, don't blink. You just might miss your babies grow up. Trust me, friend, a hundred years goes faster than you think. Don't blink. And I cried and I lifted my hands to God in that old pickup in the pasture because I saw that I had my heart's desire right here in this life that I had in my husband, my kids, and this land where we lived. And I began to fall in love with my life as I love my Lord even more and more. Over the next few years, a passion for girls and women rose in my heart for them to believe the truth of who God is and who he made them to be. There is a desire to share my, tr- my struggles and who and what healed them, to help others find truth, to be real instead of false, authenticity, to discover themselves and have the courage to be her, to embrace and savor life here and now. My focus became believe truth, be real, be who you are and don't blink. Currently, I'm starting fresh with new pieces to show later this summer at a gallery and then in the fall. I have commissioned pieces that I am working on as well. What ushers me into this place of worship is super macro photography. It puts me in awe of God as creator and all that there is. Walking alone with worship music on my MP3 player also moves me to worship. Art, writing, photography, it all expresses my depth of heart from a tender and vulnerable place, sacred and scared. Sacred because my heart comes from that very sacred ground that I have journeyed with Jesus. I've written e-courses, journals, my photos, the art pieces that weave all of it together. All of it comes from a sacred journey. But scared, I have felt scared in this journey. Vulnerable. But I've found that as I was vulnerable with my truth, there is a divine freedom that comes. And as I am freed, others begin to heal as well. So, while the scared is still there, and at times when I prepare to speak or teach or show art or even post on a blog at times, the freedom for myself and others to take the sacred journey with Jesus is worth it. As I root myself deeper in his love, I find more safety to be vulnerable and share those sacred parts. Well, I hope you enjoyed that interview with Jodine Shaw. Thanks so much for stopping by. Make sure and subscribe so that you are able to get um, the podcasts as they show up every few days. We try to do it every other day at the very least. Thank you, and I appreciate you taking the time.